Welcome everybody, this is Mark Stepp. I am the Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve and I will be your host for today's webinar. It's the uh, Q&A for Realvolve for beginners and hope you guys are having a great day today. Uh, we're going to wait just a few seconds, maybe another 15-20 uh, seconds, let some of the attendees come online. It's one of those uh, days where you're grateful that you're uh, a minute late. <laughs> uh, was uh, just working with my computer and all of a sudden it decides to lock up totally and uh, doing some stuff in Excel spreadsheet and it just decided to die. So I had to uh, reboot real quick and get get here. So again welcome to this session of Q&A with Realvolve for Beginners. Uh, this particular session is really geared for those people that are just getting started with Realvolve and probably has some questions on what uh, uh, what you need to be doing within Realvolve and we will be going over just whatever questions you have, whatever things that might be cropping up. Now this is not really geared for technical support if you have a technical support question of some sort. Uh, we do um, ask that you click down the bottom of your screen where it has live chat support, visit our chat um, help support line and they will take you uh, one by one and just kind of step you through uh, challenges that you may be having and going through that. But this is really geared for questions that that are not specific to a you know, problem type thing. So, but we'll see what we can do. Um, in the control panel for GoToWebinar on the right hand side you will see an area for questions and in that questions area uh, just type in whatever questions that you may have pertaining to Realvolve, what, whatever you're running into as far as questions that you've not, uh, not been able to find answers to and we'll uh, go through the questions. I'll give you the answers if, if I have the answer. If I don't have the answer you're probably pretty uh, you're in trouble. Um, I should have pretty much all the answers. Um, however, if I don't, well, I'll, I'll find out the answer to the question and get back to you. So, um, yeah, at this point, just start typing in your questions, and we'll uh, we'll start going through those. Uh, question number one here is: um, I've created several workflows, and now they are gone. Where did they go? Um, Okay, this is an easy one, more than likely, and that could be more of a, a technical support question. However, I'll go over it real quick. Uh, we get this a lot, and let me, uh, let me just come over here to the workflows area. One of the things that you really um, may want to look at is a couple different things. Number one, if you've typed in something in the search field for, uh, for the thing and you press enter, if it doesn't find anything, it's going to be gone. The other thing is, is if you've only created maybe some uh, uh, contact workflows and don't have property or transaction workflows, yet if you are having it sort by a property or transaction workflow, um, it would hide your contact workflows. So if you're just starting um, I'm betting that you just have contact workflows and probably one or the other of these property and transaction workflows are highlighted. And because they're highlighted, it's only showing those workflows, which in your case, you probably don't have any. Uh, take a look at that. That was the answer. Okay. Glad, glad that covered it. Um, you know, the, the filters that we have within Realvolve, um, we have them in workflows where you can filter your lists by different uh, settings of different types, whether you want to see contacts, properties, or transactions. We do the same type of thing in the uh, templates area. So if you come over here to templates, you can say, well, only show me my, uh, my emails, in which case if I click on that, then it would just show email. And if I want to see just my uh, SMS messages, there they are. So, you know, if you don't have something, then it would show up blank. And you'll see that it, it's just a little darker. It's, it's 
versus a gray. It's in it's black, and uh, that will tell you that that particular filter is on. And if that one is on or any of them, then it will only show those that are in that situation. The same type of thing is available. Like if you go into your contacts, your properties, or your transactions. And within here, if you've got any of your filters on, you know, it shows you that you've got nine contacts. And in my case, I've got nine contacts in here, but I'm filtering it by certain things. If for whatever reason you're filtered it by something that doesn't exist anymore, um, it could show zero. And in that case, uh, you might get worried. But don't worry. We've, uh, we're sure that just by clicking on the clear filters or removing the, the selections, it'll come back. So now you see there's 780 contacts in that list. Um, so that takes care of that. Any other questions? Here's one. Um, if I deleted a contact, why? Uh, if I deleted a contact in Google, why is it not deleting from RealVolv? Okay, so. A uh, little background on that one. That's a great question. Thank you very much for that. One of the things that, that we want to make sure everybody realizes is that we do synchronize with Google so that your, your names in Realvolve can synchronize to Google and if they make a change in Google, they'll synchronize back to Realvolve. Um, however, remember that there's a lot more fields, a lot more data pieces in Realvolve than there is in Google. So uh, we want to be extra cautious when deleting information. And what happens whenever you go and you delete a record from Google, what it will normally do, uh, what it does, is it will add a tag. I mean, just I don't know that I've got any in here, but let me see here. Uh, deleted, it will add a tag here called deleted from Google. And what this is, is these are records that for whatever reason they were deleted from Google, but we don't allow Google to fully delete everything from within Realvolve. What we do is we tag it with this uh, uh, deleted from Google option. Let me go to bring here. Uh, deleted from Google. And on a periodic basis, maybe once a month or whatever, or whenever you know that you've deleted a bunch of them and you just want to make sure they're out of RealVolve as well, pull up that tag, uh, view all the, the names that are in there, you can go in there, mark them all if you want, and then come in and choose delete. So it's really kind of a two-stage delete because there could be properties, there could be other things that are attached to that RealVolve contact that you may you know may not really want to remove it. You may have wanted to remove it from Google but not necessarily from Railball. So uh, we just prevent that from happening and make it a two-stage delete. It's a little inconvenient but um, I know for a fact we've added that as a uh, as a feature because we've had so many people that did this. They They went into Google, they wanted to wipe out everything out of Google and bring everything back in from RealVolve back into Google. They just wanted to refresh their list. Well, guess what? If you delete them from Google, it, it would delete them from RealVolve as well, and then they're gone. So we prevent that by adding that deleted from Google. Now, if, if you had done that, if you do the deleted from Google, one thing that happens is, is if you make a change to one of these names that have that deleted from Google, it will not synchronize back to Google if it has that tag. So if in any circumstance you want to make sure that a particular person does get back put into get put back into Google, sorry I'm twisting my tongue there, um, just remove that deleted from Google tag. You can just click on the little X um, and in just a jiffy it takes that information, sends it back over into Google and you are good. So that is uh, that's the reason why, and that's what happens. So, um, hope that helps. Any other questions? How can I import my Wise Agent data? Okay, so importing, we have some really cool, nice features built into Realvolve for importing. If 
uh, from within your Wise Agent or whatever application you may have been using. If it was Top Producer, Agent Office, actually not Agent Office, they're, they're a, a desktop application. But, um, any application that you're using that you can export your data into a CSV file, that's a comma separated values file, uh, you can export from that application and then go into our settings and then from within settings there is this import contacts. Now that is a little bit of a misnomer. You can import properties and transactions but mostly uh, importing from uh, into the contacts is what it's geared for. Uh, you can choose the file that you want to import so you can select that file um, I'm going to choose, see if I can choose something here um, that is uh, something a little small, uh, contacts, okay, I'm, contacts full, I'm not sure what this is, let's see if we can import this here real quick. Okay, so what happens is, is once you select the file and you choose upload, it uploads it to our system so that we can start mapping the information. So um, in this particular case what you can do if you've got a wise agent uh, data uh, you can click on the little down arrow and I'm sorry I, I'm using my beta account I shouldn't use that. Uh, we do have um, a, a, a series of different pre-mapped systems so for top producer, for wise agent, for uh, a lot of the different ones you can come in here import contacts choose a file just doing it again sorry um, I'm going to pick um, uh, pick that file again um, this one here I guess now this is really not a, a data that we would normally use this is just something else and uh, what we can do then is start mapping those files well you can map them individually if you want, but you can also come over here, pull the drop down, and we've got all these different, they start with a little pound sign just to keep them at the top of the, the list, but we do have a wise agent and also the wise agent vendors. Uh, you have the ability to export two different styles of files and wise agent uh, puts those as two separate CSV files, in which case we can import both of those. We've got them for top producer. Uh, Solve 360. I didn't think we had that. I guess we do. Uh, the Referral Maker, Red X, Realty Juggler, um, Prospect Converter, Outlook, Mojo. I mean, just several. There's about 25, 30 different ones that are available that you can import from. So it's just a matter of selecting that particular uh, layout and it will pre set up the rest of the fields. Now, I do recommend that you go through, you figure out uh, what the field is. You can see this is the label of the file that came in, which these really don't make good sense. I, I picked one that's a little bit um, ambiguous, uh, but it would have like first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, and you're just going to go in here and say, okay, this is the primary contact and maybe their first name, uh, primary contact and their last name. So you just figure out what the column is and then you uh, map it to the associated thing. We have the ability to import the primary contact. Also if in that same record, in that same row, you have both a primary and a secondary contact like a husband and a wife, Realvolve typically breaks those into two separate records. We have a way of doing that just by choosing secondary contact and you do the same first name, last name. We do have the ability to import the property and transactional information as well. So uh, mapping those out, once you've mapped them and click on import, it should import them. But yeah, if you've got a wise agent, just pick the wise agent list, it will map the appropriate fields. This one obviously is not a wise agent thing, so it's not doing anything, but once it selects it, you can choose import and it will import them. All right. For those that are just joining us, uh, you can go into the uh, questions area and answer, uh, ask any questions that you may have in, from the control panel and we will uh, try to answer whatever you've got there. And uh, one thing I didn't say earlier was we do kind of go until the questions 
kind of dry up. So if you've got a question, be sure to put it in there. Um, otherwise, it may not get asked and you just won't get an answer to it. Any other questions? What's the difference between properties and transactions? Okay, so um, the easiest way to think of this is whenever you come to your dashboard, we have three main databases, obviously the contacts, and then we have the properties and the transactions. The properties are your personal listings. You're, you've listed it, you've, uh, or somebody in your team has listed it and, and put it in there. That's, that's for the, the sellers, pretty much. Now, at some point through that process, if I, if I come here to a property, I'm going to select one of these uh, properties. Let me see if I can find one that's active. Okay, so you've, you've probably put the, the property in. It's active. At some point down the road, you find a buyer or another agent finds a buyer for you. Whenever that buyer is found, you can come over here and you say, well, I want to change this property from active to pending. It's, it's a pending sale of some sort. And it's going to ask you, do you want to add a transaction? So what that does, if you answer yes, it, it will take that um, property and create a new transaction from, from its information. Now, if you come into the listing tab of that, one thing that it, it adds is you can see this little transaction. It creates a little link there for for the, the property so you can click on it and it will take you straight to that, that transaction or you can just click on the little transactions and you'll see that it's in the list as well so you can pick it either place. It's, it's the same, same thing. So a transaction is the things that you need to collect, the data that you're needing to know about through the closing. It's, it's really the closing process. Now you could have a new buyer but you didn't have the listing. In that case, you can come under here under the plus and say you just want to add a new transaction. You don't have to have a property, a listing, uh, in order to create a transaction. If if you are the the selling agent, uh, the the listing agent on that, the seller's agent, but the the listing agent, um, and you have the listing you can turn that listing into a transaction, but you don't necessarily necessarily have to have a property for that. If you just happen to have the buyer, you're the buyer's agent, you've got a property and it belongs to some other agent, just add that property in here um, as, as if it was a property, but it's in this case, it's a transaction. And the reason we do this is there are different fields that you're going to collect. You're going to collect uh, earnest money, uh, there's different types of important dates and there's lots of, of things that, that go along with that. Um, there are different people, different party members that will be involved. You know, in a, in a property, in a listing, you don't necessarily have buyers yet. So there's no, you know, we, we don't allow you to put in a buyer information into a property. You have to have the buyer information in a transaction. So that's really the difference. The only difference between them is the, the property and the transaction. Um, is whether or not you, you have the buyer or not. Any other questions? Uh, will this be recorded? Yes, um, I am recording this. And once it is finished, we will put uh, the, uh, the recording up on our YouTube channel so that you guys can review them and look at them. Okay, uh, when I'm going down my list of names, assuming contacts there, um, and, you know, and click on the contact to edit, when I return to my list, the list refreshes and I have to find my place again. Can it stay in one place? Okay. Um, unfortunately, kind of no. Uh, but I'm going to show you something here. And this hopefully will help you a lot. So let me, uh, I'm going to clear out the filters here. And um, actually, this is my, my training site, and there's just not a whole lot of names, but um, we'll, we'll go ahead and use this. You could have, you know, 800, 1,000 names or more, you know, whatever is, but I think what you're saying is, is you're going down through this list here, and um, you then want to click on Mary Dow. 
So here I click on Mary Doe and it brings up Mary Doe's information. If I then go and I make any kind of changes, if I then go back to my view all screen, um, it takes me back to the top of the list, um, in which case it's doing there. So that's just the way a browser application works. If it refreshes, it goes back to the top of the list. However, um, as you're going through these, one of the things that you can remember is that these names are just links. They're URL links. So you can, instead of clicking on it, doing a left click, um, you can right click on it and say open in a new tab or open in a new window. If you do an open in a new window, it will take you to a new window. It will open up that contact information just as if you had clicked on it with a, a left mouse button um, and shows the information. Now, once you make your changes and you close that, it takes you back to your list again. So it's, you know, from that point, you can then continue on from where you're at. Um, here's John. I'm going to open a new window, and I see all the information on John. I can make whatever changes, and then I can close that, and I'm back at my list again. So it's just opening another window. You can do the same thing for a tab where it'll just open up a little tab here. So you could really, I mean, you could have, you know, multiple people open at the same time if you needed to. Uh, but uh, just using that right click and choose open window should help solve the problem that you have. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Uh, here's one. My assistant can't see the workflows that I created. What am I missing? Well, going back to that original question, it could be that she has filters on is one option. If you come in here and, and double check those uh, workflows, make sure that if you just had uh, contact workflows, but if, if she has the property or the transaction workflow filter on, uh, it may not be showing it. The other thing that I can think of, um, and if none of these help you, again, you might go to the live chat support and they could, uh, can help you out, is you can go into the settings area, since you're the, the admin, go into settings, go into users and permissions. Now, here's a case where we've got Joe Agent is the account owner. Uh, that is a pretend me here, okay? Uh, and then Annie assistant would be the assistant. In this case, Annie is not an admin. If, if you want to give your assistant all the rights and privileges that, you know, to see records and stuff, one option is to make him or her an administrator. Just by checking on this, put a little check mark there, that will make them an admin and they can see and view everything. That's that's one option. However, you may not want to give them full access to everything, but you want to give them certain um, security permissions. So what you can do is, if that is not checked, then there's an extra link here that you can click on, in which case you can set up other rights or restrictions, in which case um, there's a section here for all sections and they can, for their own system, their own records. They can read records, they can create their own records, they can update their own records, and they can delete their own records uh, because we don't have the for all users selected. However, um, you may want to give them the ability to read other users' uh, contacts, properties, transactions, and there, there's, there's different sections uh, within RealVolve and you can choose you know, what you want to give them access to. Here's one where if you want to give them access to the workflows, give them read access for all users. And what that would do is that would allow them to see your workflows uh, in order to use them. Now, they would not be able to update them. If you want to give them the ability to update, you would probably need to also turn on um, the update. And to do that, you just click on add a new type 
say for workflows, I want to give them update rights for all users. In which case at that point whenever that is saved then it will uh, put that in there so now they've got not only can they read those workflows but they can also update those workflows for all users. So whenever it's for all users that means you, know, you or, or whoever what, whatever other users are out there. Uh, so one of those two should be the the solution to fix the problem. Either they've got the the filters turned on or they just don't have rights to view them in which case either making them an admin or giving them read rights to workflows should solve the problem. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, here's one. Um, I heard in one of the webinars about free workflows. Where can I find those? Excellent question. In the workflows area, let me come over here to workflows. Uh, you can click on workflows and then this shows you the list of workflows that you have installed. If you're just getting started, you may only have one workflow in there that we preload with, uh, with new systems and it's just a, a new listing type workflow. However, there's lots of others that are available. Um, by clicking on the Add button, normally you can create your own. A lot of people just go in there and create their own. But we do have this option here, Add Workflows from the Library. And if you choose this Add Workflows from the Library, click on Continue, it will show you a list of, of all the different workflows that we have available for you to use. Now, um, over on the right-hand side, you'll see this type. There are public workflows, which are completely free. If you um, wanted to install this, you just click on the little down arrow. It'll tell some information about it, who created it, and then you can click on the install package, and it will install it. Um, once it installs it, it takes a few seconds for it to go in, but um, once it's in, then in the workflows area, it'll show up over on your left-hand side and uh, you can go in there and add any of the public ones that you want to. Public ones, like I said earlier, was, are all free. Uh, this one, the Realvolve Exclusive Client Service Workflows, these are, there's like 13 different workflows, 31 different templates um, dealing with home buyers, escrows, follow-up from past clients, past buyers, um, after sale. I mean, there's just there's 13 different ones that you can use and they just have some miscellaneous stuff. The, the cool thing is, is once you've got those installed, you can go in and you can use them out of the box. You can use them how you want or you can uh, change them. Now we do recommend if you're going to change them that you might want to make a copy of that workflow first and then change your copy so that you're not messing with the original because you might mess up on your copy and want to go back and um, don't want to have to deal with trying to restore uh, a workflow necessarily that's been messed up. But it's there. Now, besides the public option, we do also have premium options. And uh, I'm going to show this one just as a, as a for instance. Dave Beeson, uh, he's been around for many years, about as long as I have, I think, maybe longer. Uh, Dave Beeson's been around. He creates uh, a series of different email letters and stuff that you can use. Uh, the e-letter writer was his original one and there are like, there's 13 different workflows, 111 different templates and they just have all kinds of, of things that that you, um, well actually his original was the letter writer. The e-letter writer came later. Uh, there's, in, in this case, there's seven workflows and and 202 templates. So one of the things that he's pretty famous for is his seven-year follow-up letters. And just for once a month, every month, a client can get a letter and it's a lot of, a lot of basic information that, that can be used uh, by anybody for anything. Um, and what you can do is on any of these premium ones, come down here, look who it's designed by. Typically they'll have a website of some sort. Click on that website, uh, purchase it from their website, 
in, in most cases it's something because it's a premium one you need a code for it so if I come over here and say install package it's going to ask you for an installation code you can only get that code if you are either purchase it from them or they give it to you or whatever uh, if if it's you know, like some of these uh, uh, the paperless agent or any of these other ones that maybe are coaching club type workflows if you're a member of paperless agent coaching club um, they've got some workflows and you can install those but again you need a code you can um, get hold of support at the paperlessagent.com and they can give that to you uh, free of charge if you are a member of their coaching program. So uh, that's where you can find all the um, existing workflows. Once they're installed, like I said, you can come over here and like here, I'm gonna, let me just do a search here for CSW. So here are those uh, customer service workflows, the, the different ones that we've got available. What you can do is come here, say you wanted to uh, uh, edit one of these, you know, maybe the escrow service. There's this particular one is if you're dealing with a buyer, what are all the things that you want to do for your buyer to close this? And it has uh, several things that you do before or after closing day, contract date, stuff like that, several different things. Um, but if you wanted to, you can come over here, you can click on the little copy button, and from that copy button, uh, create your own copy of it and then go in there and add things delete things change things however you want if you wanted to you know modify one of these come in make your modifications save it once they're installed on your system they're your, yours to, to use however you see fit um, so you know it's it's important for workflows anyway to make sure that they work the way you do and if you if you need to make some alterations to an existing one, great. If you're one of those kind of people that you've already got a checklist, my recommendation is, is instead of uh, using you know something that's already there and trying to modify it, I would just come in here and say create a new workflow and go through the steps of creating that workflow. And a lot of people say, well, I don't know how to do that. Okay, so one thing that I want to make sure that everybody knows, if you're not, if you've not been there yet, make sure that you go to this website, go.realvolve.com forward slash training. Go.realvolve.com forward slash training. And what this is, is I put this together for you guys to have kind of the basics. It's, it's not, you know, real in-depth training type pieces. Uh, you'll find those, you know, things like that more on our website. But just to get started on things, and I've got one here called Building Workflows. And it will take you through the process of explaining, you know, what is the accessing the workflows, how do you get to them, um, adding workflows to your list. Over here's your list, you know, how do you add them. Um, going through the whole gamut of creating a, a workflow, excuse me. Um, and that that will take you all of it. I mean, it's a minute, 19 seconds, two minutes. I mean, it's just, you know, in less than 10 minutes, uh, less than 15 minutes anyway, uh, you can have a good overview of how to create a workflow and, and just kind of go through that process. Um, if you miss something, you can go in there, rewind it, and it works really well. So take a look at those if, if you've not already. Um, we've got sections in there for adding contacts, adding listings, your properties, uh, adding your transactions, your closings, the templates, and also just starting the workflow. Once you've created the workflow, once you've got templates in place, you need to start that workflow, either a person or a, a place, a, a property or a transaction. And this kind of takes you through that process of how do you start a workflow, and it will take you step by step through that. So. Uh, hope that is helpful in um, in your thing uh, in your, with your question. Any other questions? Uh, does RV does RV uh, does RV have um, autoresponder text capabilities for new captured leads? 
that have fed into the system. Um, yes. Um, in fact, the same question, maybe this was posted by you earlier. Um, this question is, uh, uh, is pretty common as well. What it is, same, uh, same thing that you're going to do uh, for text messages, you can do for emails or whatever, but it is a workflow. So uh, let, me, uh, let me show you guys one thing here. Um, we use Zapier as an integration point for uh, a lot of things. And one of the things that you can do, let me come here to Zaps, and um, um, actually, let me go to uh, Robolf Zaps. Okay, so. I'm going to go into a zap here for uh, new customers. Okay, so I'm just going to choose this one for lack of a better one. Uh, whenever a new customer comes into Realvolve, they, they sign up for a demo or, or whatever, uh, we've collected information, obviously, about you whenever you sign up originally, and it, it comes in through Chargeify. Well, you could be coming in through, through Zillow, you could be coming in through your own website, whatever. It's just a matter of creating a zap that, that brings that in. And uh, creating the contact as an action within Revolve. And we've got training on zaps, but I just want to show you one screen here, this uh, edit template area. One of the things that happens is whenever a, a new customer comes into Realvolve, just like you guys have leads, we have leads as well, uh, we immediately put them on a seven-day onboard workflow. So, uh, you know, I'm, you, you guys, whenever you sign up, you, you get start getting once a day for seven days, you get this little email that says, hey, you know, one just uh, um, welcome you to Realvolve, but you know, go here for this training, or go you know, do this or do that. So it, it gives you some basic information, but the, the workflow itself is started from the Zap. So you can, not only am I collecting name and address information, email address and stuff, uh, but it, it, it allows me to uh, tag that person and start a workflow. So um, whenever you go into a workflow, it would start one of these. Now, let me just see if I've got a new, uh, new lead. In this one, um, actually, new lead from website. Okay, let's choose this one. Okay, so pretend like in that zap we had chosen this new lead uh, from website. In which case. Uh, it has right now, it just has one activity in it, which is a text message, which is the exact same question you had earlier. Uh, so in this case, the, as soon as that contact comes in, it's going to turn around and send a text message. Now, you could send just one if you wanted to, but you know the purpose of the workflow is to do several things and keep you organized over time. So I would recommend instead of just doing one text message, um, you know, thank you for registering at our website. Uh, let me know if you have any other information. Don't leave it in their court. Add other things to that, that workflow. So you can come in here and say, you know, as soon as that lead comes in, maybe on day two, I want to send um, a, uh, what do you, what are you looking for? Uh, what are you looking for email or something like that um, so I can say when I want to do that uh, one day after the start date in this case maybe I want to send it as an email and I know I'm going really fast it's not something that you necessarily need to do I just want to sh do this real quickly um, in this I want to send an email uh, automatically send an email, and then figure out uh, new buyer lead 
the lid. I, I'm just grabbing one. That's really not a, a good one to use, but I'm just going to grab one here. So click on save. So and add. So you can create as many different different things to happen in a workflow that you want. The the question was was you know, do I have an autoresponder? Yes. By setting up this this uh, message here. Now, one thing I did go over, and I ought to do that real quick, is on this one. Uh, when do I want to do it? Zero days after the start date. Set it zero days is fine. Uh, but whenever you come in here into the send SMS messages, there's a choice here that's important, and that is the send immediately. And on that email that I did right here, I chose send automatically. There is a difference between automatically and immediately. Automatically means send it automatically at whatever time is set to send emails. Um, you know, it could be on that particular activity, it may be set for a certain time, you know, 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock or whatever. Maybe you want to send it at a certain time of day. You can do that. Um, but within the, the system, you also have the ability, and I'm going to open up a new tab here. Um, actually, I'll just open up this tab and go to settings um, and emails. Within settings and emails, um, and, and really, we, we kind of clump it all into one area here. Uh, there is a section here called auto send message. And auto send message means both emails and SMS messages if you're sending out messages. Um, in this case, at 6 a.m. is when I have this set up. So if, if an email is set for to go out today, and I have it set for automatically, if that activity does not have a time associated to it, it's going to be sent out at 6 o'clock a.m. Uh, if it gets added after that time, but on that same date, uh, that as far as if it's you know, put in the calendar today, but maybe it it was uh, put in at 10 o'clock a.m. It will go ahead and get sent out immediately um, within a, a, a timer type thing. However, uh, in the case of the immediate that we're doing here, we can we can send items automatically, which is what I was just talking about, or you can send it immediately. And the immediate option is different in that as soon as this activity gets added to the calendar. I mean, just boom. As soon as it adds it to the calendar, it immediately sends that email. It doesn't wait on any time. It doesn't wait on any date either. So if by chance you come over here and say, well, I want this to be five days after the start date, but you send it immediately, it ignores this, the, the day setting, technically. It just, it will, as soon as this activity is created, it sends it out. So uh, you can create your autoresponder by setting a little message, which message that you want to send, and sending it immediately, and it will go out. Um, if you guys need you know, help setting that up, uh, again, visit our live chat support, and they should be able to, to help you through that process. But um, that is just an easy way of setting up an autoresponder through the system. Um, here's another question. Um, when importing leads from top producer, it's given me a bunch of options. Which one should I select? Okay, so for top producer, um, whenever you're importing, um, going in under settings and clicking on, I'm not sure if I've got any top producer, um, top producer files. Um, to show, actually here's, here's one maybe, um, just grab one here. So whenever you choose a, a file to import, and we covered this in the, it's kind of the same thing that we did for Wise Agent, um, yeah, there's all kinds of, of things, mappings and stuff, and there's, Top Producer has just a ton of, of fields and stuff like that. Uh, what you're going to want to do is click on the little down arrow, come down here to choose the, uh, typically it's, it's going to be this top producer shared one. Um, there's, there's two of them. One is for contacts only. Um, if you did not want to import the properties and, and 
listings, the, the transactions from top producer, you just wanted to get the contacts, you can do the contacts only and it will skip the, the other ones. If you're wanting to bring in your, uh, your properties and transactions from top producer into RealVolve, then choose this uh, top producer uh, pound, top producer shared. What that's going to do is that's going to um, uh, map, and it takes just a few seconds because it's a big long file, but it'll go ahead and create all the mappings for you. I do recommend that you kind of go through this list just to make sure that you know all the the fields are filled in that you want to keep. Now there's some fields that we don't have that we, we have no way of mapping them, but um, a lot of those are fields that no one ever uses in Top Producer anyway. So uh, you'll see that there is a a column here for which is the heading column. Let me go all the way to the top here. Uh, your data it says your data. These are the, the the column headers of your data, and then the sample data that goes along with it. So you can kind of just go through there and see there's different data. Uh, once you've got this mapped properly. Um, you can, and if you make any changes, you may want to save it so that you've got your own copy of that, in which case it'll make a new entry for it, and then you can click on import. Once you click on import, it will start taking that file and putting it into the system, importing it, and what you can do is come over here under that import contacts, click on the CSV import report, and it will show you kind of a list of what it's doing. At some point, it will come up with finish. Sometimes it takes a little bit. It may take, you know, 15 minutes or, or so to import all of your data, depending on how much data you've got. Um, in which case, you can click on it. You can see some some basic information on what it's doing at whatever point. Uh, you can refresh that screen at any point and and see that it's finished or not. If it still says importing or started or you know something like that, then uh, it's not done. It'll once it gets to finish, it'll it'll be there. Um, if there is some kind of problem, it'll tell you that there's a problem. And if you go through your import and something is just obviously not right, you mapped a field the wrong way or something, come back in here, click on the undo button, and it'll take a little bit of time to undo that import, but it'll remove all the records that were imported so that you can then go back in and re-import again. I would wait until it's completely done and come back over here to your dashboard, look at your record count on your contacts, properties, and transactions to make sure that they get down to the zero or, or two records or whatever that was in there to begin with. Um, before you go and, and import another because it could be you know it's adding one and deleting another and, and uh, could just be confusing but uh, that is what you would do for importing that um, uh, there's also option for skipping duplicates with email key what is that okay so whenever you're importing data and maybe you're importing data from multiple sources where let me go back into that same one again. Um, top producer, grab that file again. Sorry, I missed missed that. Okay, so yeah, um, normally, and, and really kind of why I skipped it. Normally, if you're doing a, a fresh import, the all contacts option is all that you will want to do. If um, if you're importing and you you've already got names in your database um, and you want to make sure that you don't duplicate certain imports you you have a couple different options one you can skip the duplicates and it uses the email address as the key you know, the problem that we run into and uh, you know you could have in your database more than one John Smith so just doing a search by John Smith is not the best option for for doing it. We do allow you to do updating based off of the name key, the name key being the first and last name like that. Um, or you can do updating by email or you can just totally skip the duplicate. So if it 
is importing a record, it looks to see, do I already have this person in here by looking for an email address. If that email address exists, then if you have the scoop, skip duplicates, it will just ignore your, the record that you're trying to import. It'll go to the next one. Uh, if you've chosen to update the duplicates, uh, then it will import it and basically merge the data uh, and it uses either the email key or the name key to find those duplicates. So that's what that's for there. Um, you also have the ability to say, well, this whole list, everybody in this list, I want to put them as buyers in my, as a tag. Uh, so you can add some additional tags in there. And also if you're either, for any date fields that are in your database, if they're in US format versus Canadian format, where it's, uh, month, day, year versus day, month, year. Make sure you choose the appropriate uh, format for dates because January 3rd and March 1st look the same uh, to the system. It, it, we have to know which one is the month and day, so just be cautious of that. Um, when I did the import, I did not update my tags, but it saved them as notes instead. I have undone the import. How do I upload it so the tags import as well? Okay, so uh, once you've undone them, that's great. Re come back in here to redo uh, that list again. And I'm going to come back down here and choose uh, top producer again here. So um, every column in your list, uh, again, has your the, the little header here. And we have certain ones of these. Let me kind of just scroll down here. Make sure I just do a find tag, maybe. Um, well, it's, oh, tags. Okay, so here, here, like this one here. <clears throat> Excuse me. I should have said tags. Well, it's not finding it in the fields. That's interesting. So here, I'm doing a primary contact tags. And then here's what it's doing is it's doing a look in the column named uh, contact type. And in this case, in that field is buyer and seller. Uh, in which case, if you choose tags, then it will import that as a tag into RealBob. And you can have as many different columns assigned to tag as you want. So let me just come down here to another field and like um, not that you would do this, but I mean you could come in here and say, well, I want to sign uh, you know this particular one, and city is not a good one. You don't, wouldn't want to do it to this, but you can have tags used as many different places as you want. So find the column that contains the tags that you need imported, and make sure that you select that. So um, that'll be available to you. And then just do the re-import it just like you did the first time. Great question. Um, if you need help with that import, um, just contact our staff and we can, uh, uh, our, down here at the bottom, this live chat support, and they can help you through that as well if you're still having challenges with that, Alice. <coughs> Any other questions? We've got about uh, six more minutes for this session. If anybody has anything, starting to lose my voice a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, how do I know if digs is uploaded? Okay, great question. Um, under the workflows, if you come in under workflows and you come in to the um, search field, just type in digs. And if you see a bunch of items, well, boom, there they are. Um, if they're not in there, um, if you've not actually done the install, just like we did earlier, you click on the little plus, click on add workflows from the library. Um, if 
Kindle gave you a digs code of some sort for the complete suite or whatever, um, it'd just be a matter of coming down here and clicking on the install package, putting in the code that she sent you, and then clicking on install, and it should install it. If she didn't send you a code, um, send me an email and uh, mark at realbob.com, and I will make sure that she send or gets those installed for you. Um, if you purchase those, so absolutely. Uh, you paid for it, but don't know if it's installed. Also, the internet lead workflows. Okay, same, same thing. So, um, um, more than likely, if you bought the the complete suite, um, I think they all come together. I know she's got a few different packages, but I think the complete suites um, has everything. There might be um, some differentiators, but if you purchased them, you, you, you should have them. If they're not in there, just uh, if, if you go into your workflows, do a search for digs and they're not in there, then send us an email and we'll make sure those get installed for you. You are welcome. Anything else, guys? Um, you know, once again, I, you know, I'm, I'm bouncing around here through Realvolve you know, pretty proficiently, and it's because I know the system so well. It takes a little time, so don't, don't, uh, uh, don't worry too much about uh, bouncing around like I do. Take it one step at a time. Uh, once again, I really encourage everybody to go to the go.robob.com forward slash training. Make sure you go through those six items at least. Um, if you've not gone to our YouTube channel, go to youtube.com and do a search for Realvolve, in which case it will bring you to uh, my Realvolve uh, page, in which case we've got tons and tons of, of different videos that are available that you can go through. There's other Q&A uh, webinars that we've done that you may want to go through. Um, smaller how to fix different things, um, you know, how to do different things within the system. Make sure that you view, view those. Um, but also check out the playlist that we've got, um, especially if you're doing workflow stuff. And oh, Allison, if um, or Alice, sorry, uh, if, if you've not been through those, we have a webinar here, um, a webinar session here called uh, Workflows to Build Your Business. And these six videos, and they're all, uh, they're 40 minutes or more in, in most cases, uh, they go over the digs suite kind of step by step. And these would be really good. Do you need to listen to all of them? No. But the ones that you're most in, interested in, listen to it, go through it, see if there's things that make sense or whatever. You may want to go in there and, and make changes to the one that she created and, and again I probably recommend that you make a copy of it before you change it but and, and change your copy. But um, you know, go through the, the pertinent video that goes over that section. Some of these cover more than one but um, Kindle just did a tremendous job at putting together um, these workflows and putting her mind into the uh, the webinar, telling you guys, you know, what was she thinking when she did this or why she did certain things, and it's a great, great resource that you should take some time to to watch and listen. Uh, Kindle is uh, is really a great expert at workflows and has uh, some amazing things that she's put together so definitely use that for I'm not seeing the internet lead workflow um, there are some digs workflows okay so I tell you what I will send a little message uh, to Kindle and have her um, get that taken care of for you we'll, we'll get y'all set there Anything else? All right, guys. Well, it is 2 o'clock. It is Thursday. Remember, tomorrow is Friday, uh, TGIF. And um, just thank you for taking
taking the time to uh, you know, begin your journey in learning Realvolve. There's, there's a lot to it. Take your time at learning it. Don't get in overwhelmed. If you need help, let us know. We're here to help you, and we want to uh, you know, just give you the tools that you can do to, to do what you need to do. If you need anything from us, let us know. So have a great rest of the week, and uh, we will see you next time if you um, uh, need anything, so let us know. Have a great day.